It's no wonder that self-watering planters exist. Watering your plants can be a little bit tricky. First, you need to know what the right amount of water is for each plant. Too dry and this, the plant can shrivel up, too wet and it can develop root rot. Second, you need to remember to do it regularly. So, a bunch of people realized that and said, hey, we're gonna make planters that take care of this for you. But do all self-watering planters work well? Are they all suitable for all types of plants? Spoiler alert, they're not. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go through some grow tests of different types of uh, self-watering planters, explain what they are, and help guide you in the right direction. So, hope you enjoy! Enter stage right, the self-watering planter. This is great because you don't need to know how much to water, just whenever the reservoir is empty, you fill it up. Also, you don't need to know how often to water, you can just fill this up once a week and you're pretty much all set. When you look at most self-watering planters, they've got these little nylon strings coming down and these are wicks, so they pull water up into the soil. Uh, in this video, I'll show you some tests that compare wicking to the other different types, uh, the kind of less common types of self-watering planters and what we think the best kind is. So the big problem with wicking planters is they tend to stay too wet. And I want to tell you a little story about this planter I made 10 years ago. I started dating someone and I thought this was a really clever design. It was an old wine bottle, you could cut it in half, stick it in, this bottom of the soil would be underwater and would absorb it up. Uh, so I thought it was great, I got a glass cutter, I made it and I transplanted their money tree into it. And then one by one, the leaves started just falling off, and it was really sad because, you know, this plant slowly dying that was supposed to be a gift. And uh, we took it to the, the local nursery, and they were like, like, you have root rot that's way too wet. Um, so that was my first lesson that self-watering planters, although it did keep the water wet, it didn't keep it the right amount of wet. And that's really the uh, issue and the challenge with making a good self-watering planter. Fast forward a few years, and at Urban Leaf, we wanted to start looking at different types of self-watering planters and understand how they performed. Here are the main types of self-watering planters. A nylon wick, like I showed you before, a ceramic barrier that the water has to pass through, an oya. This is a very old technology where you fill up a ceramic vessel with water and it kind of seeps out into the soil. A system called semi-hydro. This is really popular with orchid growers where LECO wicks up nutrients and then a crack key style hydroponic system. So we did a pretty rough side-by-side -side experiment but if you'd like to, us to recreate it just drop in a comment and if I see enough interest I would love to run this experiment uh, and kind of do it with a couple more duplicates. But even with this very limited sample size, we saw a huge result, and it's at this ceramic barrier, this one where you've got a pot that's fully enclosed, but it's an unglazed ceramic, really did the best. Uh, I also want to point out that if you look at the nylon wick one that stayed really wet, you can even, even see mold forming on the surface of that. The unglazed ceramic wall is interesting because it makes a stable feedback loop in the soil. When the soil is dry, it pulls water through much faster, so it can regulate itself really nicely. And I ended up getting really deep into this, uh, to the point where I joined a ceramic studio, made a bunch of different samples. Uh, we ended up figuring out a really great porosity for growing plants. You can see that sample that's labeled C2 has a really nice, consistent, moist profile, but then the top is dry, so you don't have that mold issue. I even got to the steps of working with the manufacturer to see if they could hit the specs. Um, but you can uh, you can kind of see that there's still water st on, standing on the inside. We could not get the manufacturer to sort of hit the specs I was able to in a sample. So um, this project made interesting, but sort of on the shelf for a while. As a you know plant obsessed person, and it's like our business. Uh, another thing we did was sort of whenever we saw planter that used this technology, I'd pick one up and test it out. Uh, so I've got some samples here, like the wet pot. Um, this one's great. It stayed, and this was one from the experiment, but it stayed a, a little bit too wet. Um, so I don't think it would do great with like a succulent or herb, like Mediterranean herbs, herbs that have evolved to like dry or rocky conditions. I'd still be a little bit afraid of root rot in something like this. Uh, on the other side of the spectrum was this one. This is called the Great Northern. Um, 
and it was it stayed pretty dry so it would be gr great for those dry ones um but the reservoir was a little bit small so it didn't really quite solve that like not wanting to water it every couple days problem but uh still very uh, beautiful little product uh and then as we were scrolling kickstarter and uh this project from singapore popped up and it was called the cause whip uh this was really exciting to me especially because it was like less than half the price of the others and nice and big so we backed the project they delivered on time and um yeah we got got two of them and i loved how they worked so so much so that i i went to try and buy more but i couldn't find them anywhere uh so i reached out to the founder for like a, a bulk order and to congratulate him on a job well done uh and we ended up getting a bunch to keep playing with so from that initial outreach we started talking with the founder and we realized that uh, we all had a lot in common and common goals so we decided to join forces uh, and he had about 600 units remaining from their initial kickstarter run uh, so we've kind of teamed up we've decided to put them on sale for amazon and once we sell out of those we'll work on refining the product further if we need to um, but yeah we're, i'm excited that now these pots are available for uh, whoever wants them. Uh, they're really nice. One of the hardest plants to grow in self-watering planters are Mediterranean herbs. This is because they are used to like really dry soil and their roots are really prone uh, to becoming waterlogged and root rot. Uh, so I decided to kind of check on them and I was like, if I can get this type of pot to work with Mediterranean herbs, it's, it's pretty much going to be able to work with anything. And uh, it'll be a really good basis for a system. So I started some trials with chives, thyme, oregano, and rosemary. And as you can see, I used two different types of soil. Uh, and that's another interesting thing that these pots do is that uh, depending on the type of soil you start them with, they will regulate their soil moisture to a different level of dryness. So uh, this cactus mix will never get very wet because it doesn't have that much suction uh, that it can pull on the, the ceramic face. Whereas with the potting mix, that'll stay much wetter. Uh, I don't want to say we've cracked the code, uh, but all these plants are looking very happy. I think there's still some more work to sort of dial down like what the right soil pot interaction is. And as we figure that out, we'll be sure to publish it and update the blog. Um, but yeah, uh, if you've got any more questions about how this stuff works, how you could use it, please leave a comment. And um, I'd love to sort of dig into this more with y'all. Uh, thanks.